Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening to all of you joining us today for the Water Security, Inclusivity, and the SDGs webinar. My name is Erin Jordan. I am the Strategic Programs Officer at the International Water Association. I'm pleased to welcome you to today's webinar that is being organized by Jan Hoffman and Blanca Antizar, uh, who are spearheading the Water Security Initiative within the IWA. Now, before we begin the webinar, I would just like to give you some housekeeping rules and uh, some protocols that we have for our uh, Zoom webinars. So it's important to let you know that this webinar will be recorded and made on demand on the IWA Connect Plus platform as well as the website. And this will be along with the presentation slides and any other relevant information that the speakers and organizers think would be necessary for you to have. Also, uh, speakers are responsible for securing the copyright permissions for anything that they will present today and Everything that they say, please be aware that this does not necessarily reflect the, the opinion of the IWA. Now, as you are joining from many places, we would love to know where you are uh, joining us from. Uh, please do so in the chat box. You should see this on your screen. Um, feel free to interact with each other in this chat box and uh, with the panelists as well. In the Q&A box, if you have any targeted questions for any speaker, please be sure to add your questions there. You should also be able to find it at the bottom of your screen. Please be aware that if you do raise your hand, your hand, we will not be able to give you the floor to ask this question because as you can see, you do not have a mic or a video to come on camera. So please be sure to ask this question in the Q&A box. If we do see that an attendee has raised their hand, the moderator will then instruct you to also ask your question in the Q&A box. Now, to give you some more context and share the agenda for today's webinar, I would like to hand over to Professor Jan Hoffman, who will give you just a bit more information about this. Jan, the floor is yours. Yes, thank you very much, uh, Aaron. Thank you very much, uh, Aaron. Yes, um, perfect. Yeah, welcome everyone. Uh, good afternoon from uh, the United Kingdom or Good morning or good evening, wherever you are in the world. I see that we have people from all over the world uh, popping up uh, here in the chat. So very welcome to this uh, this seminar. And um, it's the first seminar we are organizing with the theme of uh, water security. Um, and I'm organizing this together with uh, Blanca Antizar. And um, this is um, yeah the first webinar in the series we are going to organize around the theme of uh, of water security. So yeah, what is what is water security? Um, uh, water security is of course a concept which is um, not new. It's it's already developed in the 1990s um, by the United Nations, and uh, from there on it proliferated uh, through a number of um, um, yeah organizations. Uh, the United Nations, uh, uh, UNESCO, the, um, uh, the, the Global uh, Water uh, uh, Forum uh, uh, brought uh, different uh, um, definitions. Um, and um, after some reviewing, we came to the conclusion that still the, uh, the UN definition is the most encompassing one. And uh, it covers areas uh, in, in multi dimensions like drinking water for health and, and ecosystems. Uh, water for ecosystems, also water for economic development and uh, and climate risks. And yeah, it's a very important uh, uh, um, uh, concept because um, without water security, it's impossible to achieve uh, the sustainable development goal. So for it, it lays the foundation, so to say, for all the, the, the 17 sustainable development goals, not only uh, SDG 6, but also all uh, the others depend on having uh, sufficient water in uh, sufficient quality uh, at all times. And of course, water security also acts in different scales. We can uh, experience water security when we are at our homes and 
open our taps and water is readily available uh, there. But it also goes all the way up to the scale where uh, we are talking about um, uh, catchment areas and, and, and watersheds uh, and whole uh, river uh, flow uh, areas. So everything in between is uh, what we will see also in the webinar important in terms of scales for uh, water security. And then finally, yeah, the question is for, for who is uh, water uh, uh, security? Eh? Can we achieve that water security is uh, inclusive, inclusive for everyone, and that we don't leave anyone uh, behind? And that means that we need uh, global collaboration between stakeholders and governance and also create that whole framework of water security within uh, uh, an area or a, 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 a within political uh, stability for a very long time. Could you move to the next one, please, Aaron? Yeah. So what are we looking at uh, if we are looking at Sustainable Development Goal 6? Um, yeah, it, it's, it's about meeting the targets uh, there. And there are still uh, millions uh, or even billions of people who are um, yeah, not having access to uh, uh, to water, to sanitation, and uh, to hygiene. And yeah, we are trying to, to progress this, of course. Uh, progress through um, all kinds of, of processes, uh, investment, uh, new innovations, uh, and, and trying to coordinate this through uh, achieving water security. Um, and we have to accelerate uh, these uh, these things to um, yeah to to reach the targets on time in 2030, and that's where water security is uh, is is also uh, important uh, again. Um, next slide, please, uh, Aaron. So water security um, connects with a number of uh, important aspects to uh, um, if, if we want to. Uh, yeah, to be able to, to, to create water security. It connects to things like decentralized water supply and sanitation systems. We need innovation to, uh, to create water security. Um, we also need new and innovative uh, financial instruments to sustain uh, uh, the finance, financing of, of solutions we, uh, we, we envision for, for water security. Digitalization is a very important aspect of, of the system. And um, yeah, to cover all these things, we need to improve uh, things like uh, public water supply and sanitation services, make them available to, to everyone. And uh, that also means that uh, we need to do uh, uh, capacity development and uh, think about how we want to govern all these uh, systems because there are multiple and multiple stakeholders involved in this. Uh, so we have, in fact, a complex uh, problem, a complex uh, issue with uh, water security, and we want to uh, create, um, yeah, uh, improve water security for everyone uh, in the future to um, have a good uh, situation for water. And the question is, of course, how can we measure our progress? And that's where um, assessment methodologies uh, will, will come into play. Um, next slide, please, uh, Aaron. So, um, we envision a comprehensive approach for uh, uh, this, this uh, creating this water, uh, uh, water uh, security, uh, promoting uh, unconventional uh, solution. We also need to look at uh, source uh, diversification and, uh, for instance, uh, develop things like circular economy are really important uh, solutions to well, create uh, uh, water security for, for everyone. And that final part, uh, inclusivity, is an important thing, uh, as we will see in the, in, in, in the presentations today, um, where we would include water security for everyone and for all stakeholders involved in, uh, in the process. Um, please, the next one, uh, Aaron. So what I would like to do then is first introduce you to the three speakers for today. We have three uh, very renowned speakers uh, and uh, um, speakers who are working in the field of water security for uh, already a long time. So uh, really experts in, in, in the area. We start with a presentation uh, of uh, Hassan Ambulga, um, who has a PhD in uh, engineering and uh, civil engineering and, and the environment from the University of Kassel in Germany. And he is also uh, working as um, 
the chair, vice chair of the uh, Middle East uh, Water Forum. And um, the next speaker then will be uh, Alexandros Makarigakis, who is a regional hydrologist uh, in Africa for UNESCO, um, and also has a lot of experience in the field uh, with, uh, with water security. And finally, I would like to introduce uh, Juliana uh, Marsal, who is uh, actually my PhD uh, uh, student here in Bath. Uh, she's almost uh, done. She submitted her, uh, her thesis uh, already, and uh, she has been working on the assessment of, uh, of water security uh, in, in urban areas. So with that, um, I would like to uh, ask uh, Hassan to, uh, to start this presentation, and uh, you hope and you, uh, I hope you enjoy all the, all the presentations today. Thank you very much. Thanks so much, uh, Jan. Thanks so much, uh, everyone, for being with us to, today. Uh, it's a great pleasure for me uh, being with you today. Uh, so my presentation will be mainly uh, about uh, linking digitalization with uh, water security. Uh, so it, it would be mainly discussing what are the current state when it comes to the water challenges. You know, the, 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 SDG, uh, the SDGs in general started in 2015, and we are and we are in the middle of uh, of this agenda that will end in uh, 2030, and we are off track. So I will talk about the challenges, why we are off track. Then uh, I will talk about digitalization and how it can accelerate uh, water security, and uh, also the need for a new paradigm since we are off track and there are many complex challenges around it, and how we can really leap forward in order to achieve water security and the SDGs. So the challenges uh, you are coming in uh, from different uh, uh, regions. And, uh, I, I see here in the, the participants, many are coming from Europe, from Africa, from the Middle East, and from many places. You see all these challenges that is really uh, varied from place to place with, with really challenges re related to increasing water demands, uh, coupled with climate extremes such as floods and droughts. For sure, all of this have put a great pressure on our socioeconomic development, vulnerability of the resources and what we have reached to today. So you find these challenges that come from uh, at the first level, at the utility level with access to safely managed when uh, water is really interconnected with the city, with the green areas, and how to bring also resilient uh, water and sensitive cities. The third level is many the cities connected to, uh, to basins and the major issues uh, regarding transboundary water uh, issues. So you see all of these challenges are really huge and complex, and you would find uh, these pictures in many places around the world. The challenges are acute is really mainly in countries in which they have intermittent water supply. Uh, these people or these countries have only received water only uh, for a limited time, for uh, one, uh, once or twice per week. And they, for sure, they have to store uh, their water in tanks in order to get or to secure the water. And the scale for uh, these countries or for these uh, people is 1.2 billion people do have access to the water network, but don't have water all the time. The causes for this, as you can see in this uh, figure, are really uh, varied from uh, not only from a water scarcity point of view, but also there are also some challenges when it comes to the operation and also the governance and the institutional point of view in order to achieve uh, continuous water supply. For that, when you find these challenges, uh, you would find that many decision makers or countries, organizations who are looking to solve these solutions. You see in these pictures, we are looking for new sources of uh, water, which is really uh, costly, like desalination or wastewater reuse or any different sources. But actually, you would find in the demand side, you would find really a huge losses and what we call non-revenue water. The scale of non-revenue water is really huge, is uh, 120 billion, uh, 26 uh, billion cubic meter per year is being lost, whether due to physical losses like the leakage in the network or commercial losses uh, 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 from uh, illegal uses or uh, inefficiencies of the meters. 
So if we look at this demand side management, you will find it in many countries, especially in water scarce countries, like in my case in Egypt or in the Arab region, as the most water scarce, you will find also a huge losses when it comes to uh, to the water due to uh, this inefficiencies in the system or the aging and of the infrastructure. So it's really important when we are uh, going to the challenge, talking about the challenges of water security to consider also there are not only challenges when it comes to the supply side with water scarcity, but also on how we manage water in uh, everyday life. The challenges when it comes to finance is also huge, uh, that we need really uh, like uh, four to six times of the capital investment of today. As you can see in this figure, there is a huge gap in order to reach the SDG six on safely managed water and sanitation. And uh, just a few weeks, there were a report by the World Bank. Uh, it, uh, it reveals that we have an annual execution gap of 20, uh, 72%. So it's a really huge gap. So we have to ask ourselves from where we can finance water. This means that the current finance is not uh, enough in order to achieve uh, the SDGs. So this is very important for us to know this is as a scene for the water security challenges that we have today. Uh, as Jan described, when it comes to uh, water security, it's not only about the water availability, but it's about the holistic approach on addressing the water challenges from drinking water and human well-being, socioeconomic, climate change and water-related hazards and the ecosystems. And for that, here comes the digitalization as a really a great hope for us. And when we are discussing digitalization, it is not about the technology. It's about the strategic uh, imperative for creating this more sustainable and resilient and the interconnected water management. So it's mainly about the strategy on how we can really, it changes the way we manage water today, it changes the way we collaborate with each other. And here it's really refers to the strategic adoption and the integration of digital uh, solutions in order to provide uh, uh, data-driven approaches within the water uh, management sector. So it mainly will work as a, a really uh, as a key role in order to change uh, the way we manage water from reactive water management to more proactive water management. And here we would find for digitalization, we would find divide, uh, and especially between also countries and also within the country in terms of limited access to digital infrastructure, also lack of funding and also an equal distribution for investment in digitalization, because you would see that sectors like energy are more advanced uh, rather than water and agriculture sectors. So water and agriculture sectors needs really attention when it comes to implementing digitalization because, because we are lagging behind when it comes to implementing this advanced solutions that will support us. When it comes to urban areas, it, the definition for water security, it was it, it's a general one. That is why I was working on urban water security assessment uh, uh, framework and applied uh, also in many cities around the world. And here it's really uh, captures the essence of the urban challenges. It's mainly about the dynamic capacity between the water system and the stakeholders, but also here about also the equitable access for uh, water, because you would see major challenges when it comes to equitable access when in uh, intermittent water supplies. They need also to emphasize that we need to shift from intermittent water supply to continuous water supply with wise management to have a continuous and physically and legally available water and affordable cost. In order to reflect to all these terminologies that we have equitable, continuous and physical, you would see in this figure with uh, uh, four pillars of uh, the uh, water security and this also has been uh, given for uh, many networks like Mawak and the here Alexandros was us talking about uh, uh, water security. You would see it is not only about the availability, it's more about the diversity of water resources, our consumptions, and also the socioeconomic part when it comes to really institutions to cover as a, as a cost this because you would find the high levels of non-water affordability so we can deal 
with climate change. Uh, one example that we could have it also from uh, my region in Beirut and Lebanon, you, they have intermittent water supply. You would see in this spider diagram, uh, you would find here the scale from zero to five. Zero means poor water security and the five is high water security. And you would find the major challenges when it comes to the access to safely managed water and sanitation with also major uh, issues when it comes to uh, ecosystem, climate change, and also the socioeconomic part. So if you go with, and uh, this was uh, published at the Global Water Security Series of uh, UNESCO in the last one on urban uh, water, uh, you would find also the details of it and how really we can really uh, look at all the pictures that we have from, from water security, not only from the availability point of view as major indicators said about this. In order to navigate the challenges for digital transformation, so we have to address the infrastructure limitation in terms of outdated and aging infrastructure, data security and cybersecurity, financial constraints, and the major issue also digitalization also is mainly about people. So we need to also have adaptation and to work in order to avoid the resistance for the change to more uh, or to a new management or to advanced management and to go away from traditional water management that proves that it is not enough to achieve uh, water security. And for sure, we have here a collaboration and here digitalization will play a great role in order to provide for us not only to interconnect the system, but also interconnect the stakeholders. And here, when, it, when we, we envision a digitalized, a digitalized the future for here, it is not only for water, but also for the nexus approach, which we call the for water and energy and the food and the ecosystem, that we really need to optimize the resource management and using uh, the uh, digitalization in order uh, to uh, have an intelligent and smart water management. And here also is a major uh, need for us in the water sector is mainly to have a data-driven decision-making in order to inform decision-making about what is really needed in order to achieve water security and to see also different scenarios for, for that. For sure, the monitoring for water security needs a digitalization because it can give and really a real-time uh, monitoring for uh, the systems and it can also uh, help us when it comes to the challenges that we see or the crisis when we have any a crisis from climate change or any uh, crisis that we, we have in our uh, systems. Also community engagement and awareness. So this is very important when it comes to implementing also the IWRM, which provide a holistic approach for the stakeholder to interconnect with each others. And here digitalization plays a great role in order to have also community and also the stakeholder engagement and the awareness also uh, to emphasize the role also of the citizens to achieve water security. As I said, we need a new paradigm. This means that we need to shift away from business as usual uh, by changing the way we manage water from reactive water management to proactive water management from linear systems of use and dispose to more circular economy model to change the way we finance water to by, by for sure, improving the credit awareness of the uh, utilities and also our institution engaging the private sector and also to the, the way we collaborate with each other. Key components for, for sure for digital transformation that we need data integration, real-time monitoring, uh, platform in order to, with analytics to uh, uh, improve the decision-making, a smart infrastructure, interconnected also platform with different stakeholders and different also uh, disciplines, automation and optimization, and also the need for innovation ecosystem to create an enabling environment for that. For that, we need the five eyes. Uh, when we are talking about water security, and uh, the water community needs to also to look at uh, the leapfrogging for water security because really the challenges are huge and we really, really we need really to double our efforts. That is why we need this five eyes. We need the integration by implementing the IWRM, integrating disciplines, and also having the uh, holistic approach when it comes to 
uh, addressing the challenges and the solutions for water security. And here needs also innovation through new technologies, financing and partnership, and the need for resilient infrastructure and for sure information when it comes to implementing the digital transformation. And in institutions, uh, because many institutions uh, need also a reform, because you would find in many countries around the world is that cost recovery is low, and also institutions need to to be reformed from different uh, 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 from different perspectives. Key messages here from my presentation that really digital transformation can really play a great role when it comes to implementing a digital transformation. A huge also uh, role for uh, all stakeholders also uh, for actions when it comes to implementing digitalization for water security as we are off track and the need for capacity building in order to invest for sure in this digital skills and the training for the staff and also to uh, work to really with the uh, against the resistance for its change and there are major also uh, uh, success stories that we see in many countries around the world in order to implement digitalization and for sure this provides really a need for policy support and uh, scalability for the digital uh, solutions that we have innovative financing that we need from ppp to also more uh, innovative uh, financing models and the major issue also to need for us in the water sector for the stakeholder engagement, not only within the water sector, because water sector is not a sector, it's a connector that connects all sectors and all ministries, and that needs from us to really consider that, that we need really uh, a sustainable way for water uh, management. Here you would find also the recent uh, 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 publications, uh, the last one, it was mainly on the UFM in order to bring a digital transformation for the Mediterranean region. And here you would find all these references also from UNESCO or my recent book as well on assessment framework for urban water security in order to really achieve water security in holistic way. Thanks so much for your attention and I would be happy also to receive your questions and then. Thank you. The floor Thank is you. yours. Thank you, Hassan. Uh, it's uh, great to to see your uh, to, your vision uh, here. Um, yeah, I would like to uh, invite everyone to post uh, their questions in the the Q and A uh, uh, box uh, at the bottom. Um, you can already start uh, asking the questions to uh, to Hassan here. We will uh, uh, go to to answering them at the at the end uh, during the Q and A uh, session. Um, I would like to uh, ask uh, then uh, for Alexandros uh, to uh, turn on his camera and uh, microphone and start uh, his presentation. Thank you very much. Welcome, Alexandros. And Hassan, you can switch off your camera again. Okay. Uh, good morning, everyone. I hope that I'm uh, audible. Uh, thank you very much, Jan. I'm going to give you a few examples now of what we were hearing about the implementation of water security on the ground. And I will uh, focus mainly on some examples from Eastern Africa. Uh, my name is Alexandros Makarigakis. As Jan said, I'm the regional hydrologist for UNESCO for Africa. Um, I'm going to fly through a few slides but because you heard it already. I mean, the definition of water security. Um, allow me to boast, though, that um, the UNESCO definition is the only one which is intergovernmentally accepted by 194 countries. Uh, but it's exactly uh, as the UN water one, right? Looking at issues not only uh, of water for the development, uh, but in the, the environment also, and of course, the disaster risk reduction element. Uh, just to Tell you a little bit about uh, the program that we're running. It's uh, mainly uh, scientific. Uh, it's called the Intergovernmental Hydrological Program, and it has uh, evolved through the years from a research uh, focused program to more of a holistic system wide approach. That for the past 16 years now, right, uh, since 2014 and until 2029, is focusing on water security, looking first of all on responses and then the science for water security worldwide. We are in a changing environment. Um, I will fly through these slides because I would rather spend time now to give you some examples of this work. And I will start with some 
initial activities that we had that were more isolated, um, but that focuses on providing uh, water to people, right? Uh, I will start with Nairobi in Kenya, where we have a deficit of 325 cubic thousand cubic meters per day, right? Uh, and uh, in order to find, as uh, Hassan was saying earlier, uh, water security could be found also in the diversification of the resources. Nairobi is taking its water from uh, rivers, which is uh, hundreds of kilometers away. So we looked into uh, improving the situation by doing uh, by bringing in groundwater in the picture and uh, setting up uh, basically monitoring uh, network to see how this can be done and also looking at managing aquifer recharge using waste uh, water from the treatment plant here. And of course, within this activity, you had elements of capacity building and, and, and networking. And uh, I'm glad to say that right now, the government is supporting its own, uh, with its own resources, uh, the feasibility assessment of the MAR locations. Um, as you heard, there, there are a couple of frameworks on urban water security. Uh, we used uh, the uh, City Blueprint Framework. Actually, it's in another of the chapters that uh, Hassan was talking about on our publications. And we did that uh, also for Nairobi here and a number of other capital cities in Eastern Africa. We have done more than seven capitals in Africa altogether, and we're trying to to see where are um, the weaknesses in the system and how you can improve them. Uh, looking also at elements of waste, uh, wastewater, energy, uh, and also uh, through the lens of climate change. Um, another element uh, of work on the ground would be uh, work that we did in uh, Turkana uh, region, where uh, we were able to, oops, I'm sorry, uh, I moved, I think my slide, oh, no, it's okay. Uh, where we were able to go more in rural areas, and that's where the inclusivity comes in. Uh, we looked, we work with 52 communities in there. This is a, a really bad terrain. It's a, an arid area. We uh, basically capacitated a pump managing unit to be able to uh, repair pumps and uh, and be uh, pumps and also restore wells so they can give water to the communities. We looked at uh, restoring uh, some um, uh, areas where they could uh, uh, trap water. So basically, you had uh, the uh, how you call it um, uh, the restoration of uh, uh, not what this um, uh, hold on one second uh, not limans also, uh, but also the restoration of at least uh, some of the. A, a rehabilitation of earth pans, I'm sorry, it came. A rehabilitation of earth pans so that uh, they get access to water for their animals, uh, forestation activities, uh, limans, and of course some uh, composting uh, training and bio briquettes. Uh, following that, uh, we have some, uh, of course, capacity building uh, activities where we're trying to uh, ensure mainstreaming of uh, water education in uh, schools. Right, so that they are able to uh, start from a young age. Um, okay, here we go. Uh, and then start looking at uh, groundwater resources in this area too, using remote sensing uh, technology and also verifying the, the data with uh, hydrogeological studies. Uh, and this now gave water to communities again that uh, they had none. We were able to identify a system of aquifers and again provide different opportunities for uh, the rural communities. Uh, we have been uh, doing some research to understand better the WEFE uh, situation in the region. We have realized that most of the WEFE work is uh, coming with funds from outside the continent and the countries. Usually uh, some researchers from the diaspora are involved and focusing mainly on transboundary cases. So there's a lot of work still to be done at national level and, and uh, a lot of homegrown uh, capacity to be built. Uh, we have done some work also on assessing uh, rapidly the groundwater resources of uh, a number of regions. 
But what we realized is that we needed to move more in, into the communities. Uh, we started first in the South with uh, the Be Resilience projects who are working on communi um, communities uh, within uh, UNESCO designated sites like biosphere reserves or world heritage sites and who look into how to work with the communities to help them out with their uh, problems that they're having, whether these are uh, related to, let's say, landslides. Uh, so we had this case uh, from the Idai um, uh, typhoon that came uh, a couple of years ago uh, in Zimbabwe, and we helped the communities on uh, assessing the risk and then how they could react to it. Uh, we looked at uh, flood early warning systems for the Bupusa transboundary river basins. Uh, and we also try to address a little bit the uh, adaptive capacity in South Africa's biosphere reserves uh, to climate uh, risk. And then finally, we came with the idea that it's a little bit more encompassing. We call it care for water. Uh, and then the first step, we have scientific assessment uh, towards uh, water and food security, which includes the climate risk um, analysis, decision analysis, it includes the assessment of groundwater resources using remote sensing, uh, water quality, again, using remote sensing, early warning systems, uh, the buildup of, uh, let's say, uh, multi-criteria decision analysis uh, models for managed aquifer recharge. So all these uh, tools help you with the resource. And then we use a couple of other uh, tools. Uh, one is the household water insecurity scale experience. Uh, which can uh, identify vulnerabilities at even an individual level, right, at household level. And also we use uh, heat maps, uh, which can be created using artificial intelligence to identify potential groundwater contamination, to start prioritizing in a kind of uh, independent way uh, where the next round of activities, which is basically on the ground activities for sustainable livelihoods have to take place. So if you don't have a lot of money, you work with the, the scientific tools on the identification of the resource and its quality, then you, uh, you focus on the most vulnerable with the other two tools, and then you start with the work on the ground. And of course, within this care for water approach, we have a capacity building and technology transfer component that addresses not only decision makers, but also uh, people on the ground. And last but not least, I want to show you one example of that, uh, the Care for Water for Turkana uh, that we're working now. And for the first time, what we're going to do is going to do a water balance for the lake. It's mainly a, a livelihoods project that focuses on the fisher, uh, fishermen community that are in the lake. And what that means that I'm 10 minutes. Um, and what we're trying to do is we're trying to actually make sure that there is a sustainable development in the region. And uh, we are trying to make sure that we have not only just the water balance of the lake, but we trans translate this water balance into a decision-making tool for both uh, decision-makers in uh, the government but also to send certain messages to the communities so that if the levels, let's say, are lower or if there is an issue of pollution to direct where the fishing should be taking place or for the government to be able to have uh, some um, compliance mechanism and be able to avoid overfishing of the lake. And uh, practically, this is it. I, I just wanted to, to give you a couple of uh, things, though, that maybe we don't necessarily meet in different parts of the world. Uh, we're doing a couple of regional projects with the World Bank, uh, UNICEF, uh, UNDP, and other colleagues uh, in the Horn of Africa, like the Global uh, Access Facility and the Groundwater for uh, Resilience Project of the bank, where we are harmonizing uh, maps and we're looking at where the data are. But let me give you a little bit of a reality. It's not only about the data, right? It's about the quality of the data. So what you see right now is mapping of groundwater wells that of wells that we received from different sources in Kenya. 
And as you can see, the wells can earlier they can be in Ethiopia. Some of them actually are in the Red Sea. So uh, the point we want to make is that there is not only the the need for data, but there is a need for good quality data in order to be able to provide services. That's it. That's, that was the message I wanted to throw in. Uh, thank you very much for your attention and apologies for being a little bit late. Thank you, uh, Alexandros. Uh, very interesting to see uh, all of this and um, also how you um, actually transfer a very abstract uh, uh, concept of water security into real life uh, and, and concrete uh, projects uh, uh, which are targeting uh, specific uh, issues and, uh, 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 and and challenges. Uh, so I think that translation from um, concept to uh, uh, full uh, and real life uh, 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 solutions is, is very important. So thank you very much for that. Um, I would like now to continue with uh, the final uh, speaker, uh, which is uh, Juliana Marsal. And um, yeah, she will talk about uh, uh, water security in an uneven uh, landscape. Juliana, please go ahead. Thank you. Thank you, Ian. Hello, everybody. I'm Juliana, and I'm here today to talk about urban water security and uneven landscape. Sorry, I'm trying to pass the slide, but. There you go. So as we've seen today, water security is a multifaceted concept that is linked not only to water availability, but to water hazards, to socioeconomic characteristics, to the ecosystem and et cetera. And when we are looking to urban environments, we have a high population density, we have different land uses and occupation patterns, and we have just the coexistence of a lot of different systems that, uh, and we find ourselves with a very complex challenge that is urban water security. Sorry. And influenced by the city's historical development and urbanization process, and sometimes just inadequate uh, planning and some political choices, we do find significant disparities within the urban environment. And as a result, a very uneven distribution of different aspects of water security. For instance, different um, distributions of green spaces, of vulnerability to water hazards, domestic water consumption, accessibility to services, etc., uh, which in, in turn results to a very unequal uh, water security, very different realities and experiences within the city. This picture here shows Sao Paulo and two very different neighborhoods side by side, probably experiencing water security in very different ways. And again and again, what we see is uh, that marginalized groups are more affected by water security issues. And those same groups are very often overlooked in uh, evaluations or left out of planning. Uh, and we have actions that are actually failing to reach those who most need the most, creating this cycle, the circle of inequality in the urban areas. Oh, sorry, back. There you go. So during my PhD research, I looked at inter. I'm sorry, I looked at interurban water security as a way to unveil inequalities. And one of the case studies was Mexico City. And this is a very interesting case study because it really brings out the complexity of urban water security and the diversity of experiences that can be found within the urban area. It's a huge city with 9 million inhabitants uh, and the city alone, we're not even considering the, the larger urban agglomeration. And if we look at certain indicators like the SDG indicator 61.1, that it's a, about the proportion of population using safely managed drinking water services, we see that the city is actually doing well with a supply coverage of over 94%. But if we look at other characteristics linked to that, such as the quality of these services, then we find a lot of problems, which leads to important inequalities within the city. The city faces uh, very important water shortages and supply interruptions, which lead to this very unequal and very variated distribution of realities. 
We have communities that received water just a couple of hours per week, communities that are completely dependent on water delivery, uh, weekly truck deliveries for water. And uh, as we see in the map and the green um, areas, areas with continuous supply. Of course, that leads to conflict, to frustration, and just a very unequal scene. And then uh, in such scenarios, such a situation, you have households that end up bearing the cost of storage as well, to adapt to this intermittent, intermittent supply and to all the interruptions. And this aggravates even further the inequalities because then people who can afford, they can have more uh, water storage and then they experience better uh, levels of water security even in this very unreliable context. And of course, the supply interruptions will then affect consumption and that can also vary greatly. Uh, in Mexico City, for instance, we have areas where people live with under with less than 50 liters per capita per day, that is actually the threshold for water poverty and other regions that where people live and consume over 300, 400 liters per capita per day. And all that really shows how different water security experiences can be in the same city. Uh, and this year in particular, Mexico is facing a very severe water drought uh, that made interruptions even worse in the city. But it is not a new issue. There are studies from uh, with data from 2000s that also point out to inequality in the water distribution, showing that this is a, a persistent uh, problem affecting water security in the city. Um, and finally, oh, sorry, finally, um, we do have disparities. We know that we have different types of service provision that we have different access to opportunities, uh, exposure to risks, and just it's just a very different urban landscape, especially in megacities, and that all contributes to a very unequal urban life and very different water security experiences. And while this heterogeneity can um, reflect inequalities, we can also take that as a way to explore characteristics and uh, look at opportunities to discuss and define local challenges and local needs. So thinking locally and really highlighting diversity can help us investigate different experiences in the city, individual or collective in small communities or in, in, uh, for the individual around water security and help identify local challenges and specific needs. So thinking about um, diversity, we can actually look at different approaches, different financing opportunities, available assets, available local knowledge as well, and actually uh, establish efficient measures to counteract uh, water, water inequality, water security inequality, social inequality through tailored solutions. Ooh, thank you very much for listening. Thank you for your attention. It works again. Yeah. Thank you very much, uh, Juliana. Um, yeah, great to uh, to to see all this uh, this work uh, going ahead. Um, yeah, it's time now. We have about five minutes for uh, doing a short uh, Q and A uh, session, and then uh, we have to uh, uh, to round up. We we overran a little bit of time. Um, I saw some uh, some activities uh, already in the Q and A uh, box, but I think most of that is already addressed. And um, I would like to ask a few questions to uh, to the uh, three speakers. Um, maybe if Alexandros and um, uh, uh, Hassan can come uh, back online. Um, I would like to start with um, a question to, to Hassan, uh, actually. So if you, you're talking about uh, digitalization and um, I think uh, what we are looking for here is is that uh, digitalization should be a solution for for water security or at least support uh, uh, solutions for water security. Um, but what we see in many countries is is just lacking water infrastructure. Um, and um, if we are lacking in water infrastructure, how is the digital infrastructure developing? So can we actually do these uh, digital solutions uh, to to create water security? Yeah, thank you so much, uh, Jan. This is very important uh, questions, and I have addressed the digitalization divide <clears throat> uh, on this. Uh, but uh, it anyways, you know, you know, imagine 
uh, we have an old man with many diseases, like an old infrastructure or an any uh, in in many uh, developing countries or water scarce countries. If you bought uh, on them many sensors and the many equipments, it wouldn't help them more to survive, but it would give you really an informed decisions in order to make really critical uh, decisions for you in order to really sustain the sustain the for sure the management of the resources. And this is here very important. At any ways, digitalization will play a great role. Whether you have an infrastructure you wanted to maintain it, or you have an outdated infrastructure and you wanted to make really a critical decisions because you cannot rehabilitate or you cannot make rehabilitation for all the systems, you need to prioritize which really part of the system that needs to be prioritized. And also the major issue when it comes to the crisis. If you have a crisis like a floods or a droughts, the decisions here plays a great role and digitalization will play a great role. So if this sensor provides for decision makers or this digitalization technologies and solutions comes to the decision makers with the solution in front of them based on data and not only based on uh, so, uh, estimations or uh, guessing for uh, the challenges, then here digitalization will play a great role to inform decision making. That is why I say for any country uh, that really works on this regard to really to encourage them to go for digitalization and also for many countries that really need uh, uh, really some uh, capacity development for and building for sure on, on this regard. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Um, yeah, I would like to continue with a question to uh, to Alexandros. Um, what you see in Africa is, of course, a very strong uh, population growth and also urbanization taking place. Um, and um, yeah, you, you you came with a number of solutions for all kinds of challenges uh, in 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 Africa related to to water security. What what is your view in 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 the longer term for Africa for uh, creating water security, especially in in the context of this um, yeah big urban uh, urban growth uh, taking place there? Uh, no, we we uh, thank you thank you Jan uh, and I will take uh, the the opportunity to also respond to a, a question that came to the box that I started responding but I need to, to have time to to write all these things that I wanted to say uh, Miguel uh, Beltran actually asked the question I will get back to it uh, the the issue in Africa is unfortunately the the population raise right and augmentation and the urban growth outgrows any type of infrastructure development. So what is happening is we have more and more uh, slums practically, right? Growing along with cities. And, and um, that's the thing when we're talking about urban water security, right? Uh, you cannot use in these areas your uh, normal solutions because there's no networks. There's no space to even design something, right? So you have to come up with um, different solutions for them. Like for example, uh, instead of laying pipes on the ground, you can lay, you can do aerial solutions, right? Uh, so we will have to become inventive uh, and then look more on nature-based solutions uh, for uh, some of the issues because they're cheap, um, they are um, you know easy to maintain, etc. So. One of the things that I see happening, at least in the near future, because we're not talking about uh, you know long future, but at least in the near future, with the patterns that we have, we need to become you know a little bit more inventive on, on certain issues, uh, and then uh, start coming up uh, with the water kiosk idea that they have uh, in a lot of places, uh, and I include regulators in the whole picture because. Unfortunately, it's the most vulnerable that pay the price, right? You heard also from Hassan about the non-revenue water rights, more than 50% in most of the cities in Africa, right? Uh, and in some cases, it reaches 80%, which is insane. Uh, and of course, who pays the consumer? And definitely the people who are in the outskirts, they pay more than the people who are on network. So you need to come up with different solutions that they are more innovative, but also use the solutions that exist. Like I said, um, natural-based solutions can give 
some uh, uh, solutions to the problems that we will have. Now, if if you allow me, I, I just wanted to to answer to a, a question that was uh, a, a about water security and IWRM uh, and plans, right, for a water set, and how you know what that does it go first, and. Uh, I just want to say one of the things that we're trying to do now as UNESCO, right? Uh, so you have IWRM that is, it's looking at water resources management, right? But it's missing, if you look at water security, the DRR element. So what we're trying to do now is to bring in that innovation where you're trying to flip the coin on, on, the, flip the coin on disaster, right? And, and see how can we capture things before they become disasters and include them in the IWRM picture. So if you have good early warning systems, let's say, how can you inform the, the managers of dams in rivers to start releasing the water way earlier and not having uh, some flooding events that could be unnecessary if they had that information earlier on? How do we... Uh, identify hotspots based on statistical analysis of previous flood events and of uh, some projections to do actually mass structures that will avoid the, the flooding of cities, right? And on the contrary, they will create a, a very nice environment for peri-urban agriculture to grow. Okay. So these, these are a couple of things that uh, we would like to, to, to struggle with uh, in the future, and I think that's the difference also between the two right now. Okay, thank you, Alexandros. Um, yeah, considering the time, I would like to do a quick question for uh, Juliana, and then we have to to round up. Um, yeah, Juliana, I think uh, Alexandros was already mentioning it. Um, reliable data. Um, you need reliable data, and you collected a lot of data. What is your experience in in uh, how to find the reliable data? Yeah. Well, uh, especially for if you're looking into intra-urban, we do need very granular data, and to find it's almost a it's a very big quest that you have to go through because there is data there, but they are all they're not always available uh, to everybody, and um, and also not always very clear on how they were. Um, determined basically so there is a need for me of uh, not making not only making uh, data accessible for everybody but to make it clear how it was collected how if it's an indicator or something that was calculated how it was calculated and i think that is quite important uh, to to be able to provide a, a reliable assessment of water security to have good data and know where it came from how it was uh, calculated and how it was um, um, gathered. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you, Julian. Yeah, um, yeah. Considering the time, it's uh, two uh, two uh, p.m. Uh, now here in the, the UK. I would like to hand over to uh, Aaron uh, again. Thank you, Jan, and thank you to all the panelists who gives their uh, presentations. I believe that they were very insightful, and I think that the attendees can agree. So. Uh, thanks again to everyone who joined. Just before we close, I just want to sh remind you, tomorrow we will be having the Spanish version of this webinar. Um, in it, you will see Blanca Atizar. You will also see my colleague Isabella Espindola. And uh, three esteemed speakers will deliver uh, wonderful presentations just as today. Uh, so please, if you are uh, interested in joining and you speak Spanish, because it will be in Spanish, <laughs> please join. Uh, you can uh, you can um, go on the IWLearn website. Also, we will be having uh, the World Water Congress and Exhibition in Toronto in August, and there will be some water security sessions happening there. So if you will be attending, please feel free to join as well. The program is on the Congress website, and you can find it here at the link on the screen. For any attendees who are not yet IWM members, please feel free to use this discount code and you will receive 20% off of your uh, new membership subscription. And with that, I want to say thank you. Thanks to you all. And I wish you all a good balance of the day. Thank you for joining. Thank you very thank much. You.